Hello everyone, this is Dominique Amara from Ordinary Doing Extraordinary Ministries and in today's video I will be doing an updated video on the Olive Tree Bible software. I did a video uh, showing this, um, this software a few years back and it did really well and I've had some requests to do an updated video uh, since the, the design, the use, user interface is a little bit different or actually a lot different from what it was. So I'm going to show this off to you now. Uh, I'm currently using the PC version of this uh, but it is also applicable to the mobile versions as well. They all look very very similar to this. So uh, you should be able to follow along even if you're using like an iPad or um, uh, iPhone or any other mobile device. Uh, now it, this version does not apply to the Mac. I'm not sure when they'll be updating that but uh, the Mac version still has the older user interface. But in the meantime this PC version will really apply for most of you guys watching this video. If you do have a Mac you can go back and look at the previous version that I did because it is still applicable and it is still very helpful for you and I will link that in the description and I'll probably add it somewhere in the video <laughs> as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing we are going to do is take a look at the options here that are at the top. You see plenty of options here on the top right, but we're going to start over here on the left. Um, once you click these little three lines, let's go back. I think I was, okay, I was in the verse of the day. So when you click these three lines, you'll be uh, shown this these options here. So starting at messages. The messages section will show you the most recent messages from Olive Tree. A lot of times they feature a lot of sales here. As you can see, they have a popular pastor sale going on right now. You can click on that and uh, it'll take have a link to uh, their store so you can view those um, items that are on sale. Um, they also have the verse of the day. So here you can see a verse of the day graphic along with the scripture down here and you can actually click here to read or click down here to share the verse of the day. Now you also have your history so we'll click there. So let's say you're um, really you know doing a lot of things within the software and you kind of don't remember everything that you've done. You can click history and actually take a look at what you've done and, and the specific times that you did these things so you can see what resources were opened and this is very useful for you to just kind of um, get a, a look at what you've been doing and just in case you forget. You also have your notes section so I don't typically take notes in the software I prefer to use something like OneNote or Evernote or any of my other <laughs> note taking apps. I'm really obsessive about that stuff. But um, you do have note taking options within uh, the software itself. And you can categorize your notes. And also you can filter them by date, um, by title, and by verse. Next you have your highlights and this is really useful. So you know how you're reading through different, um, different books and resources in your library. You might totally forget what you highlighted and you might want to go back and take a look at those highlights. So they have them separated by color so you can look at all the yellow highlights that you've made. You can also look at all the pink highlights, purple, green, blue, um, and all the red underlines. And I think this is all dependent on the type of highlights you make. If you don't have any blue highlights, I don't know if that will actually show up in the options here. But all of the highlights that you've actually made should show up here. Next you have your book ribbons. I don't use this very option uh, this option very often, but the book ribbons uh, show you all the, the different books that you've added a ribbon to. So 
it's seriously just like a bookmark. You know how you have in your Bible, you have those ribbons. You put the ribbon where you uh, last left off so you can remember. That's exactly what the, the purpose of this is for you to just keep track of your progress in a book. And you can see all of your book um, ribbons will be listed here. You have your saved passages. So if there's specific passages that you uh, want to save and refer to at a later time, you can click. Uh, you can click on the actual verse of that that uh, scripture and uh, right click, I believe, and then click Save Passage, and it will show up in the Save Passages section. In tags. Uh, one way to kind of organize certain things in, in Olive Tree, you can use tags. I don't particularly use tags. I was trying to, but there's just for some reason tags just doesn't really stick with me. But you do have the option to create tags. And um, it looks like I was actually categorizing notes and even some scriptures using these tags. So it's a good option if you are into using tags for organizational purposes. Now down here you have under support you have sync. So typically when you open the software it'll sync automatically uh, but if it doesn't for whatever reason you can click here to sync um, and then you have your help documentation that you can view here. Now, the next section that we are going to be reviewing is the library section. And you can click here, it's a little icon with the books. And I'm going to click view all here. So when you open the library, you'll see this very nice layout of all of your books. And you can actually change that if for some reason you rather see a list, you can click the three dots down at the bottom. And you can see all of your books here. It's almost literally like a little library of your uh, content. You can filter by your most recent, recently added books. You can favorite your books. And you can view them by category. So if you want to see all of your Bibles, you can view it view uh, all the Bibles under that category section here. If you want to see all your Christian ebooks, you have them there. Christian living, commentaries, cross references, and so forth. So the library is a very nice uh, way of um, viewing what you have, especially if you have a lot of resources. This would be a great way to um, a great way to actually see them and you can of course search using the search um, option here so if you have a ton of books and you just don't want to feel like scrolling all day <laughs> you can actually just search for the title of it now down at the bottom they have a recommended section so if you click that it'll show you um, books that they recommend you add to your library and then it has an option to take you directly to the store. And we'll get into the store in a few moments. The next section we'll be reviewing is the daily reading. So we'll click that. And in the icon I clicked right here was the little book icon with the check mark. And it takes you to your reading plans. Now I don't typically do um, the reading plans in here, but they have plenty of options. They have five day, uh, 30 day, they have all kinds of plans. You can even search. So let's say you want to do a plan on um, uh, anxiety, right? Anxiety, and you'll see what plans they have available for that. Click there, okay. And if you do, um, subscribe to a reading plan it'll show up at the top so i'm just going to click here uh, grow your faith and start reading uh, my preferred translation is usually the csb continue oh okay they have goals i would rather take my time yes help me set up a goal i would rather take my time and there we go and you can start your plan progress there. But what I was trying to show you is that it actually shows up at the top in this very 
hard to miss uh, section here. Your current plan will be there. Now, let's see what happens if you do multiple plans. Um, five days on hope. Start reading my CSB. And I'd rather take my time. Or just for purposes here to so you guys can see. Let's say I want to finish it by November 20th. <laughs> Five readings in 28 days. That's pretty intense. Uh, let's say October, 30, October 30th. Continue. You can add reminders, but we'll skip that. All right. And so you got your five-day plan. And, yep, it also shows up here. So you can see the completion goal and also the other plan that you've subscribed to. So the reading plans are pretty cool for you to check out um, and just kind of browse and see what um, see what different plans they have. So we are going to just skip over the store for a brief moment, but we'll get back to that. Um, we're going to click on settings. And you have your different options here for font size, theme, and font face. I personally like to keep my uh, theme in, at the dark theme. Um, you do have options for light and default, but the dark just works better for, for my eyes. Uh, you can change the, the font face as well. And you have some advanced settings here. So let's click on that. You can change um, display options, general options. So color Jesus's words. If you don't want that colored, you just turn that off. But if you want it colored, turn it on. You can add Strong's numbers and so forth. You can really customize the colors and fonts. You can also customize the uh, resource guide and what content is shown. And you got some privacy settings here. Um, but we're going to go back. And the next thing we're going to talk about is the search option. So with search, what one thing you have to remember is that it searches the context of whatever you have open. Or it searches whatever you have open, basically. Um, if you have a Bible open, you can search for, let's say search for the word Jesus, right? And it'll show you all the places where the word Jesus or the name Jesus occurs. If you want to select, if you want to select a verse, you can do verse chooser or you can type it in. So if I want to do John 2.15, John 2.15, I can do that and it'll take me right there. So that's one thing to remember um, if you want to search by just if you know what the actual scripture is, you have to click on this verse chooser here it says select verse and then you can type it in there or you can just search like like this, <laughs> which this is a little longer, but that's one way you can do it as well. Now, the next thing we're going to just show off is the ribbon so this is just like the book ribbons that i was telling you about a little bit earlier you just click on ribbon and it'll save to your book ribbon section so if you need to come back to it for any reason you have the book ribbons there you can have multiple ribbons in the same book you can have multiple ribbons in different books it'll all show up here so uh, before we go to the store, because that's going to be the last thing that I talk about, um, I want to just show you guys the um, actual reading section here. So this is what you'll primarily be looking at most of the time. Uh, one thing I want to mention, sometimes the green bars might get a little distracting. And one way to get rid of them is just to click anywhere in the open space. So once you click there, you can have uh, just the, the text without the green bars 
and of course when you have the green bars there you also have your options so you may say well I, I don't want the green bars but I do want my options to still be available and that's perfectly fine um, you have that here if you just click this little lock icon there you go now you can still scroll still have your options here at the top and then the green bars disappear I mean they're there but they're gray <laughs> and it's a lot more readable typically I just keep it like that and then just tap to um, or click to get rid of those green bars now the next thing we're going to look at is the study center and this is a big deal so let's click on that click on open study center at the bottom and it'll bring you up, well, it'll bring up the resource guide and it'll show you all related verses that you have um, in your different Bibles and your resources uh, related to uh, whatever you have open here in this main window. You have commentaries related to this, this scriptures. You have Bibles, people. And this is really cool because in this resource guide, um, related people actually show up so we're in the book of Micah right now and it has Micah here and Ahaz as well you see him mentioned here and then he's uh, mentioned here in the people section so let's say I want to know more about who Micah is and it says he's one of the minor prophets so I can click on it and I can read different articles in the Bible dictionaries or other resources in my library about who Micah is. We got maps and charts. And uh, it says, what does the Bible say about Micah? You can click on that. And you can see all of uh, the places in the Bible where My Micah is mentioned. We see prophecies of the coming Messiah and Micah um, denounces where Micah denounces the idolatry of his times so you can really really do some research on who Micah is you got places too so same thing applies if you want to know about Jerusalem because that is mentioned here in Micah you see it there you can cl click and look at an article on Jerusalem Well, that's the Bible names dictionary, but let's see the Home and Illustrated Bible Dictionary. Yeah, you can read an article on Jerusalem and the importance of Jerusalem. You can see maps and charts and images as well. And you can add notes about Jerusalem if you so choose. So same thing as topics here in Micah, the topics of animals, church, God, idolatry, mountain, all these things are mentioned in this section. So you'll see those topics listed here and you can research more into them. So you have your maps, once again, charts, sermons. So if you have any sermons um, in your library, you'll see some related sermons here. So this is talking about Jonah because technically we kind of are still in Jonah right here. Um, and as you saw how it changed as we scrolled up because it's changing uh, the information here. So Tarshish, Nineveh, all of that is, is mentioned in Jonah. So you got your charts, images, outlines, introductions, and more. So the resource guide is really, really powerful. You can really search and, and um, get in depth with your study using the resource guide. The next option you have is parallel. So if you want to read um, something parallel uh, or alongside what you have open in the main window, let's say you want to read a different translation, for instance, I'm going to put the Amplified Bible here. And so now I have the Amplified Bible alongside the main window. So as I scroll, it scrolls along with me. So that's a really great thing if you want to read different or, or do a text comparison and want to read different translations.
Your next option is notes. And as I said before, I don't really take notes here, but you do have your notes. So let's say you're reading something in the Bible here and you want to take notes alongside it. You have that option. Uh, I'm going to just create a fake note. And then here, I'm just going to say test note. This is a test. Now with the notes, you don't have any formatting. So if you're wanting to adjust the, the font and all of that, those options aren't there, which is one of the reasons why I don't use the built-in notes. I like to kind of format my stuff, but uh, this is good for just basic note taking. You have your tag. So let's say you want to add a tag. Um, I'm just going to say peace. Bam. You can choose from uh, different tags, as you can, as you saw down here. Choose from these different topics, and it would add as a tag. So let's say I'm just going to choose that, and then we have the tag down here. You can add um, new categories, icons as well. You can change the icon, and you see the created and modified date. So, yep, there it is. It's showing up there. Now, next you have search all. So this is basically what it implies. You search all of the um, all of your resources. So let's say I want to look for the piece in all of my resources. So the word piece. And it might take some time because it's searching all of your uh, resources, but we see the topics of peace, uh, articles on peace, um, search results and open books on peace, and much more. So the study center is just a really great option and just really allows you to take your study to the next level. The last thing I want to talk about is the store. So let's go ahead and click on store at the top. So when you open the store, you see a ton of information. And mind you guys, they always have really good sales. So be sure to check back constantly. Um, you may be able to find some really awesome sales. Like right now, they have popular pastor sales. Got the, the Spurgeon Study Bible and more. Bible study tools, titles under $15, free resources. I highly recommend that you go through and just browse the store. I'm not going to do too much browsing in this video because my internet is really acting weird right now. <laughs> but, um, you can just browse through the different sales and different options they have and check back often because like I said, they always have really good sales uh, that'll be useful for your study. So I hope that this video has been helpful for you. Um, it's Olive Tree is, has always been a really great Bible software and things have not changed. It's still a great Bible software. Um, it's free. You can download it for free on your mobile devices, your computers, and uh, you can slowly start to build your collection by going to the store and adding resources there. You can add free resources, paid resources. You have plenty of options. So I thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, please hit the subscribe button and view to view more videos like this one and check out some of my other videos uh, that will also be helpful for a Bible study. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.